What is up everybody? My name is Rob. Welcome back to Rule of Two Review. Now if you're new to my channel, this is my Star Wars movie series where I discuss Star Wars news and of course sometimes Star Wars theories, given the fact that we live in a time where new Star Wars movies are happening. Today we're going to try something a little bit different for the Star Wars video as we're going no video of my lovely bearded face, we're going audio only, and I'm really excited for today's topic because this is starting to feel more and more relevant to the current new Star Wars trilogy than ever before. And I am a couple of weeks late to this news based on a quote from Mark Hamill about what might be happening with Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren in Episode 8, The Last Jedi, and moving forward, but it's still important, and I'm really excited to chat with you guys about it today. So the idea of the Chosen One in the Star Wars universe and the Skywalker story has been very important for a long time, dating all the way back 18 years since The Phantom Menace. If you can believe it's been 18 years since Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, that absolutely blows my mind and makes me feel really old. That was the year I graduated high school. And here we are 18 years later, still able to discuss theories based on that film and the story within it. So who really is the chosen one? That is the main question that I wanted to explore with you guys today because it has become, like I was alluding to at the beginning of the video, more important now than it has been since the prequel trilogy ended in 2005. Now, of course, this whole theory started with The Phantom Menace, like I said, where Anakin Skywalker, who would become Darth Vader, was the one touted throughout that trilogy and throughout the Jedi Order in the era of the prequel trilogy to be the Chosen One. This was George Lucas's idea of why Anakin was so important, why he was somebody special, how he became involved in the politics and a chess piece to be moved by some of the biggest political players to make all these other things happen down the line, which we all know became the Empire and the events in the original trilogy, which also, of course, does include two of the main characters in that trilogy, Luke, Skywalker, and Leia. But what I really love and have always appreciated about the idea of the Chosen One as it's told in the Star Wars saga and specifically started in the prequel trilogy is how once those films and that trilogy were completed, and we kind of had what was at that time the completed story arc to consider. And we had all six films to compare and the stories within each trilogy to put together and start to think about this relates to this and that relates to that. You kind of start to realize that what's really neat about the prophecy in the Star Wars story is it isn't necessarily exactly as it's told to you on screen. I very much think part of the brilliance of what Lucas was thinking and doing when he created it and added it into his story way later from when he first created the films with the original trilogy, is that it's almost to a degree left up to, inter uh, to your interpretation as to who the actual Chosen One was. And again, the prequel trilogy might tell you, it's Anakin, we're the Jedi Order, I'm Yoda, I'm Mace Windu, I'm Qui-Gon, we know it's Anakin, Anakin believes he's the one that the prophecy is about, and then those events play out the way they do. But what's so great is how you start to realize, well, wait a minute, though. The way everything falls apart, the way Anakin fails at doing his duty, the way he becomes a bad guy and essentially leads to the death of his wife and the near death of his children and the fall of the Jedi Order, the fall of the Republic, which supports the entire political standing within the whole galaxy and turns it into the Empire. Does that really feel like the person we want to call the Chosen One? Does this mean that the prophecy was either wrong or, as Yoda said, possibly misread? And then, of course, you see how Luke Skywalker's story plays out in the original trilogy, which, of course, despite being released first, takes place after Anakin's fall and the Republic's fall and all of these amazing things. And it's been such a great talking point and theorizing point for myself, just within my own brain, as well as to everyone else that I know, and maybe for a lot of you guys, who really was the chosen one? Was it Anakin or was it Luke? And there's a lot of theories and evidence to support both people possibly being the chosen one. And now, to throw an even bigger wrench into everything going on with this whole idea, we have a new sequel trilogy taking place. Episodes 7, 8, and 9 are telling us a new story that's hopefully going to continue to connect the entire world and the entire nine-arc saga of Star Wars and the Skywalker story. And we are now learning through these recent quotes from Mark Hamill that possibly... Just possibly, there might be more to this Chosen One story than we all thought. Here is a quote that Mark Hamill himself gave in an interview regarding Luke's possible character and his journey, Luke's journey, in the new trilogy. Luke made a huge mistake in thinking that his nephew was the Chosen One, so he invested everything he had in Kylo, much like Obi-Wan did with my character. 
and he is betrayed with tragic consequences. Luke feels responsible for that. That's the primary obstacle he has to rejoining the world and his place in the Jedi hierarchy, you know? It's that guilt, that feeling that it's his fault, that he didn't detect the darkness in him until it was too late. So man, I gotta tell you guys, that gets me really excited. When I heard and read that quote, I started to realize suddenly this trilogy might actually be going in the direction that feels more true to Star Wars than I initially thought. I don't need to go into the whole thing I've talked about several times about how Force Awakens, I know a lot of people hate it. I admit there are some problems and some things I wish were different, but when I step away from that as a Star Wars fan, it's great. It's a freaking great movie. I loved what it did to set up the trilogy, hoping that 8 and 9 become far, far better films. Quotes like these tell me that Episode 8 is going to start to go in the direction that I think a new Star Wars trilogy should be going, because we're going back to some of the real lore and the history of the Jedi that the Star Wars story had really been grounded in. And now we all of a sudden have this third concept of who the Chosen One could really be, and it's so exciting. So going back to the beginning, could the Chosen One be Anakin? Yes, obviously the Chosen One could be Anakin. Again, the whole concept of the Chosen One was first, it was first introduced around his character to support Anakin's character and support how important he is to the whole story that makes up the Star Wars trilogy universe. And that's why, as a fan, I want to think, well, it's got to be Anakin. If you look at the way the events play out, there is some conversation about how, like I was even saying earlier in this video, well, with Anakin, he started off as this great, amazing, prophetic person, and an awesome warrior, a great Jedi Knight, powerful in the Force, an amazing lightsaber combatant, but then he makes these mistakes. He was obviously flawed, and he led to the destruction and downfall of so many great things, the galaxy, the political situation, the Jedi Order themselves, his wife and his family. He screwed everything up and became a horrible, horrible, bad person. And so is that really someone who would be bringing balance to the force then the conversation becomes well if you think about it at the time phantom menace is beginning the sith had been extinct for millennia so says mace windu so says the lore and it's only at the time of the phantom menace with the return of darth maul and sidious and everything happening there that we started to get it to get a balance of not just the jedi but also the sith and the dark side that the argument is really that the force was unbalanced at the time that anakin was first discovered and born and that possibly by him bringing everything into darkness again for so many years was the actual balancing of the force that is a great argument and i'm not gonna lie when i look at anakin specifically and consider how he factors into the chosen one I think there's a 50-50 argument for each way. Either he was the chosen one and did bring balance to the force by screwing it all up and leaving it in darkness, or he wasn't supposed to actually be the chosen one, and it was all about the Jedi making a mistake and the prophecy being misread and Qui-Gon mistakenly placing his faith in Anakin so that everyone else, Obi-Wan included, felt compelled to have to follow through with Qui-Gon's vision, and it of course led to all of these bad things. Now with Luke, it gets even trickier, and I'm not going to lie, I'll tell you guys right here, I personally believe and have believed since the conclusion of Revenge of the Sith that truly the story is meant to tell us that Luke Skywalker is the actual pro one that the prophecy was about. He is the chosen one. Again, there's no 100% evidence to any of the characters here in all of these trilogies. It's just the one that I feel feels the most right to me is Luke. Because what's great about the original trilogy, which also kind of makes my theory a little bit harder to believe, and I'll get into that in a moment. What's great about the original trilogy is what we've learned is that Luke is the one who kind of starts to undo everything his father did. By this time, Darth Vader is known as the Terror of the Galaxy. As he has hunted it down and destroyed most, if not all, of the Jedi in the galaxy in that 20-year gap between Episodes 3 and 4, the beginning of the original trilogy, A New Hope. And so the, the, the Force could not be more in darkness and the Force could not be more unbalanced at the time that the original trilogy starts and that Luke begins his journey with Obi-Wan. And when you look at what he does and the, whole, the, the title of the final film in that trilogy says it all, The Return of the Jedi. By the time Episode 6 is happening, Luke Skywalker is the freaking man. He is like the most powerful Jedi ever. 
It's a little bit tricky because we have to remember that at that time, the films probably weren't able to convey exactly how powerful he was in the Force and as a lightsaber combatant in the same way that the prequel films were, just because of newer technology and newer filmmaking techniques. So that's, you gotta kind of suspend the disbelief that Star Wars requires of you to be able to see that I think we were supposed to be seeing that Luke was the more powerful Jedi by Return of the Jedi than Anakin ever was in Episodes 1, 2, or 3. That's my personal theory, and I think that that's what Lucas and the story were actually trying to tell us. And so by the time Return of the Jedi happens, and we now know that the Jedi have finally come back to the galaxy because of Luke making it happen again and being so incredible and so powerful that suddenly the Force is now more in balance, especially when you look at the fact that by the end of the story, by Luke's, by the end of, not Luke's story, I should say, but by the end of Vader's story, Anakin's story, the original trilogy, Luke is triumphant. Vader is defeated. Sidious Palpatine is defeated. There is no more Dark Side or Sith, at least as far as we know currently at that time. And the last remaining Jedi is the one reigning supreme, hence bringing balance to the Force. And it's really a fantastic little rope-a-dope on what's happening there. But... What's brilliant about it all is the rope dopes don't even stop there because there's another argument about the fact that really it's Darth Vader who redeems himself or is redeemed by his son, I should say. And he is the one who comes back to the light at the very, very end, saves his son's life, stops the ultimate evil in the galaxy by destroying Palpatine and throwing him down that chute and then dies as a redeemed good man, as the Anakin Skywalker he was before turning to the dark side, aided by his son. And so it's like both things are happening there. Like Luke Skywalker is stopping the evil and redeeming his dad and bringing balance to the Force. But also Darth Vader is destroying the evil, saving his son's life, and becoming a good man again, also bringing balance to the Force. And so it's so incredibly complex. When you look at specifically Anakin and Luke in those two trilogies and how the whole story plays out between those six films, it's brilliant. And while it's hard to come down on one side or another, again, my personal theory is I like the Luke Skywalker theory, that it truly is supposed to be Luke who was always destined to be the chosen one. But obviously it doesn't end there because the new trilogy is changing things. And the quote that I read from Mark Hamill earlier in the video kind of lets us understand that. Suddenly the idea of the chosen one is brought back into the Star Wars universe in this new trilogy. Extremely exciting to myself and many of us out there as fans of Star Wars and of all the movies to see this plot thread being so integral to this newer trilogy. I think it's very smart, very exciting, and it makes a lot of sense when you think about what could have been happening between 7 and 8, and even that, between 6 and 7, what was Luke doing what, what is Luke's story leading to everything that, that we learn about him by the end of episode set of The Force Awakens, where he's been keeping himself aloof, alone on an island, meditating, training, doing the things that a hermit Jedi would do? Why has he been there? What happened to him? And obviously we get glimpses into that from The Force Awakens about his history with Kylo Ren, training him, starting a new Jedi Order. It all falls apart. Ben turns to the dark side, becomes Kylo Ren destroys whatever great things that Luke had built, apparently, stuff we're going to learn about in The Last Jedi. And that whole thing started because Luke obviously learned and understood, probably from Yoda and Obi-Wan, and obviously probably Anakin. Anakin was there at the end of Return of the Jedi. Whichever actor you're choosing to believe in, it was still Anakin, the character, at the end of the film. So obviously some sort of Force-ghost relationship with his dad would have continued with Luke and Anakin, would have continued between six and seven. And so he obviously understands of the prophecy and understands Anakin was believed to be the one who was the chosen one to bring balance to the force. And maybe that taught Luke the ability and reason to believe that his sister's son, Ben, might actually be the one who's the chosen one. And he needs to work now that he has become this Jedi Knight and saved the galaxy by the end of Return of the Jedi. Now it's my responsibility to hone and wean the skills of the person who I believe is the chosen one another one of my family members in my bloodline, and make them fulfill the actual prophecy. But the fact that it all falls apart with Ben and whatever we continue to learn about that and whatever 8 and 9 are going to tell us about Kylo Ren's story and his and Luke's history is going to shed more light into the idea of who the Chosen One could be. Maybe it wasn't Anakin or Luke. Maybe it truly was Ben Solo, and, and whether it's him going good or him going bad or whatever is going gonna, is gonna to really let us know who the Chosen One is supposed to be. Not to mention, it's obviously silly to discount Rey. 
Ray also has a huge possibility of turning out to be the chosen one in this new trilogy, and maybe it becomes that character, and I would be more than happy with any of them. At this point, I love all of these characters. We only have one film with Ray and Kylo Ren, but I love both of them in that movie, and I think that they're going to be fantastic throughout this trilogy, even though there's obviously issues with what's happening with Episode Nine, I think it's all going to work out fine. But when you look at Anakin, Luke, Rey, Kylo Ren, all four characters, incredible. Four of the best characters, in my opinion, ever created. Anakin's my favorite all-time character. I think Luke is the chosen one, and I hope that it kind of turns out to be that. But also, I will say, and leave you guys with this, at the end of the day, I think I more than anything hope that we never truly get an answer. Part of the brilliance of what Lucas achieved with the concept of the Chosen One, and he did this by telling the story backwards, by the way, which is stupid how incredible and brilliant that is. Part of the brilliance of what he did was he gave us so much information and so much reason to believe it's one person or the other. But at the end of the day, when you look at those two trilogies, we can't factor in the new one yet, but when you look at the prequel and original trilogies, it's like, man, it could be anybody or it could be nobody. The movie, the story doesn't truly tell us. It gives us ideas. It gives us things to think on and gravitate to, but we still just don't know. And I would like more reasons to believe it could be any of these characters by the end of this new trilogy, but also still not enough to concretely say so that we can always, for the rest of time, discuss and debate and theorize as Star Wars fans who the Chosen One truly is. So that is it, Star Wars fans. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, lack of video video for me and just some of the photos and stills that I included. It's a different way to make a Star Wars video, I think. And hopefully it wasn't too boring and the conversation was interesting to you. It's a big deal. And obviously we're now learning it's still relevant because the new trilogy is incorporating the Chosen One idea. So what do you guys think when you look at all the characters I discussed Anakin, Luke, Kylo Ren, maybe even Rey. Who do you think the Chosen One was or is? Do you think it's even going to matter? Do you think we'll even ever learn? I want to hear you guys discuss because it's fun to talk about Star Wars. It's fun to theorize. And the new movies are going to give us so much goodness to keep doing this for all time. So thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I will catch you guys next time on another video.